Welcome to Scale Model Workshop. Whenever a fellow modeler discovers that I'm a dentist, they usually remark how lucky I am because I have all the really cool tools. And to some extent that's true. Although I've found very few that I would consider essential to have on my hobby bench. The one major exception is what we refer to as a Bard Parker knife. We call it a Bard Parker because they were the original manufacturer of these handles and blades and they're pretty much standard issue for any dental lab. The blade mounts in the handle the same way as a regular surgical scalpel shown here on the left. Surgical scalpel handles are made from stainless steel and the traditional handles aren't particularly ergonomic for our hobbies. The mount for the surgical blades is smaller than the mount for the laboratory blades, so Bard Parker has two versions of the plastic handle. The green number 5 accepts the surgical size blades and the number 6 is for the larger laboratory blades. I generally don't care for the feel of the number 5 handle and blade combination because the blades are too small and out of proportion with the feel of the plastic handle. But because of some of the specialty shaped blades, it's a good handle to have around. 99% of the time, a much better handle and blade combination is the standard number 6 handle with a 25 blade. This combination virtually drops into your hand, and it offers extremely precise control. Because the handle isn't round, you have an instant feel for the angulation of the blade. Finding an actual Bard Parker lab handle will take a little investigation because they're not commonly sold to the public. But I've seen them listed on several online sites as well as eBay. If you're not having any luck online, you might ask your dentist to order you one. There are other handles that hold the larger 20 series blades, and while they don't fit in my hand quite as well as the Bard Parker handle, I've always found any of these far more preferable for their directional feel over the typical small round X-Acto handle. There are a number of good sources for stainless steel lab handles as well as blades, and depending on where you buy your X-Acto blades, you might even find these blades are less expensive. Two of the most popular brands of blades are the Swan Morton blades and the blades sold by Havels. Blades for these knives come in a wide variety of shapes and sizes. Here are my favorites. These blades shapes and numbers are not universal and there can be significant variation in different companies versions of a particular number blade. Here you can see the Havels number 11 compared to the same number Swan Morton. The number 10A blades aren't even the same design at all. The blade I use most all the time is universally known as a number 25. But if you're buying Swan Morton, make sure you order the number 25A blade. If you're working in a wet environment and worried about rust, you can order stainless steel blades. Changing the blade might seem a bit scary at first, but it's quite simple and quick. To remove the blade, you just put a little pressure under the base of the blade to lift it while pulling up. If you feel more cautious or the slot in the handle is a bit tight, you can use a hemostat or needle nose pliers. Use whichever method feels most comfortable to you. But I have to say that I've been using these knives for over half a century and I've never cut myself changing a blade. No matter what type of hobby knife you use, the first thing that seems to go is the tip. So I always keep a small pocket sharpening stone handy to touch up the tip, especially when I'm trimming decals or masking. My favorite sharpening stone is this small India stone from Norton. It cuts quicker than a hard Arkansas surgical stone, and it seems to leave a sharper edge. It won't gouge like a Japanese whetstone, so you'll probably have the same stone for many years. Well, that's it for this episode of Scale Model Workshop, and I'll see you next time.